We thank you for those who um, had it to give, oh God, and bless them, oh Father God, that there would be no lack. And those that did give, oh God, continue to bless them, oh Father. And we'd be so careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh Father God, as we continue to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Offerings.
understand that we all are the time to straight. I give honor to God who is ahead of my life. I am so grateful to my pastor, Dr. Winfrey J. Sackers, for allowing me to stand at the sacred desk to share a message from the Lord with you. I'm grateful to have this morning with me my mama, mama, if you just raise your hand. My prayer partner, Reverend Felicia Morales, my niece and my nephew, just raise your hand. I praise God for all the ministers who are here and I understand that they could declare this word in any given moment. And I thank you, my brothers and sisters, and I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to move forward in the word this morning. We're coming from the book of John, chapter 6, starting at verse 25. John, chapter 6, starting at verse 25. And when you have it, if you just rest on your feet. I'm reading for the, from the New Revised Standard version of the Bible this morning. We thank God for his presence. Amen. He is here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. So grateful. Couldn't do anything without the presence of God. And it reads, When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him, whom he has sent. They said to him, What sign are you going to give us then that we might see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If I were to pick a topic this morning, it would simply be more than just bread. Let us pray. Lord God, we bless you and we praise you. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, God, that endures forever. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence, O oh God. We're so grateful, oh God, that you choose to visit us, oh God, and dwell with us and suck with us. Lord God, I have studied, but I need your spirit. Lord God, I have prepared, but I need your power, God. Lord, I ask that you would have your way, that you would cause Stacy to decrease, and you increase and deliver this word, that we might be built up, that we might be edified, that we might be transformed in the midst of this today, God. We thank you. And we bless your wonderful name. In Jesus' name we pray. And say amen. 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 More than just bread. Last week we celebrated Holy Communion. Where we partook of the bread and we took of the wine. Last week we, we engaged in an act where the bread had been blessed and broken for us. We partook in this to remember that Jesus was blessed and broken for us. And so each month we engage in Holy Communion to remember this. We say, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. 
And so today in this text, we're going to see what else we can learn about the bread of heaven. We know that bread is not just used for communion, but it's also used in ordinary living. It's in our meals. It's in sandwiches. And we eat it with soup. And we eat it with salads. And we have it sometimes on the side of our meal. And sometimes we eat it. It's just an extra. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just toss it away. Bread. But this is very different from what's going on in our text. Because when we see this crowd, this crowd has just been fed the day before by Jesus. He fed them with two loaves and five fish. And this, in this day, was considered a whole meal. So whereas we might toss aside bread, this they were grateful to have their full of bread. It was sometimes the whole meal, sometimes the majority of the meal. And so they, the next day, are now looking for Jesus. They have scoped out the boats to see where the disciples are. They don't see another boat. They're looking for where Jesus is. And so they get in their own boats, and they go looking for Jesus. They go out of their way to see where he is. And they're looking not because of a miracle that Jesus did in taking these loaves and feeding 5,000 men plus women and children, but they're looking because they got filled yesterday with bread. For they see Jesus as a supplier of their needs. For they're not wealthy people, they have real needs. For it was truly hard for them to make it. Just yesterday, they were full of this bread. And so they want Jesus to do an encore. Can you, can you do it again? This doesn't happen to us often that we get our fill of bread. We don't have money like that. Not like my niece and my nephew who've been with me and everything I've cooked, they have not liked. And they understand that if they don't eat it, there'll be something else they can get before the night is over. But it is not like this in the text that we're reading today. This is like Jesus has offered them a food pantry. He has given them a meal ticket and they are dependent on it. And sometimes we're guilty of simply seeing Jesus as a supplier of our needs. A source of a new place to live, the source of a new car, the source of more money, the source of stuff and material wealth, but truly, Jesus is much more than bread that spoils. He's much more than bread that molds. He's much more than the source of bread. For he gives the bread that endures. But in their minds, this miracle was all about satisfying their hunger. And so Jesus scolds them and tells them not to look for bread that spoils, but look for the bread that that endures. He tells them to believe in him who God has sent. Yes. Yes. And the crowd is saying, well, what's in it for me? What, what, what have you done for me lately? I know that you fed me yesterday, but that was yesterday. It's a new day. They're looking for temporary solutions. They're satisfied with the food that will eventually mold and spoil. But Jesus is saying to them, believe. And so they respond back and say, well, give us a sign. We need a sign. If we're going to believe you, we need a sign. And a sign is a symbol that says that one thing really represents something that's much bigger than that thing. And so when Jesus fed them miraculously with so little, it was a sign of what Jesus could do. It was a sign that Jesus could perform a miracle, not just that they could be full, but that they would believe in him. But they, 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 they want a sign because they don't recognize what's going on. They can't see that Jesus has just gave them a miracle in the desert. They can't see that this points all the way back to what God did with Israel, with the manna in the wilderness. They're not seeing any of this. All they know is that their stomachs are full. That's all they know. But this feeding is more than just bread. And the truth of the matter is sometimes people, even today, want a sign. They want to put the Lord to a test. If you heal my loved one, then I'll believe. If you handle this financial crisis, 
and then I'll believe. If you, if you get me out of this jail, then I'll believe. And so they asked for a sign. And this feeding was a sign of Jesus' divinity. It showed that Jesus had miraculous power and that Jesus was attached to Jehovah God. Yes, yes. It was a pointer to the reality that Jesus offers us provision that goes beyond measure. It was supposed to show them that Jesus had authority over physical things. It was supposed to show that Jesus had power. It was supposed to show that Jesus was able to triumph. It was supposed to provoke the people to have faith in Jesus. And the reality is, in our lives, we get signs and have gotten signs. We still have a roof over our head, though we sometimes don't have the rent money. That, that's a sign. We, we get help with our groceries sometimes when our money has run out. That's a sign. We stay safe from danger, seen and unseen. Yeah. That, that's a sign. Right. We, we stay right. in our right minds when yeah. all hell is breaking loose in our life. Yeah. That is a sign. Our kids get out of trouble when they don't deserve it. Yeah. That is a sign. And we see God's favor all around us. That is a sign. We see God's grace and God's mercy yeah. present in our lives. That is a sign. And it's all a sign to show who Jesus really is. That Jesus has all power in his hands. That he is well able to take care of us. That Jesus indeed is more than enough. That he is trustworthy and can be trusted. It's a sign that Jesus is yet faithful. It's a sign that he's dependable. It's a sign that he won't fail. It's a sign that shows up the road of understanding, the road to truth that leads us to God. They have seen Jesus, but they still don't believe. Yeah, yeah. They have seen with their physical eyes, yeah, yeah. but they have no spiritual understanding. Oh, come on now. They don't perceive who Jesus is. They don't discern what's really going on. They have no insight to see that this is a bigger picture than what they're taking in. It's truly bigger than their understanding. For Jesus is more than just bread. They're not able to see that Jesus is Messiah, that he's the anointed one, that he is the one who came to redeem them, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Jesus is constantly moving, constantly showing who he is, but sometimes we too miss it. We think sometimes it's about getting our needs met. But there's so much more. For Jesus is more than a source of bread. If we pay attention, we could look back and see what God has done in our past. And we can, by that, understand the possibilities of what God can do in our future. We can trace God's faithfulness back to yesterday and believe God for our tomorrow. When life happens, whether it be good, whether it be bad, we can ask the question, Lord, what is it you're saying in the midst of this? Lord, what is it you're doing in the midst of this? I don't understand, but I want to understand. I want to see you clearly. And so Jesus shifts. He understands that they're dull, that they're slow to understand, that they're sleeping on the job. And he switches and he says, okay, forget all that. You didn't get it. I am the bread of life. Yes. All who come to me shall not hunger. And all who believe in me shall not be thirsty. And all throughout John, he has these declara declarations of I am. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection oh, yes. and the oh, yes. life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am the bread of life. Jesus is shifting from feeding the bread that only lasts for a day to presenting himself as the bread that leads to eternal life. This is not the manna that God gave the children of Israel in the wilderness. And this is not the bread that Je Jesus just gave out yesterday. He's saying, I'm more than just bread. 
For the bread of life indicates nourishment, not for the moment, but for always. It indicates true life, authentic life, when we come to know who God is for real. It supports, it supports a fellowship with God through salvation. It is the source of eternal life. It supports the soul forever without ceasing, without end. And through Jesus' death, we have a self-sacrificing offering that is made accessible to all the world. Yes. This bread of life sustains life yes. itself. Yes. This bread of life promises to give us all that we need yes. for life today. Yes. Give us not just food to eat, yes. but love and forgiveness and all the gifts that we need to do the work of God. Hallelujah. All those who come to me will never be hungry. And this coming to Jesus is to seek intimacy with him, to become a follower of Jesus Christ. The verb come here is an ongoing, it's not a one-time event. Indeed, yes, we came. When we said, Lord, we accept you as Lord and Savior, we, we came at that point, but this is an ongoing coming. This is a daily coming. This is a throughout the day, our daily walk kind of coming. It takes time to develop intimacy with God. But Paul said, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection and in the fellowship of your suffering. This takes time to develop. This is not something that's going to happen when we do it once in a while. This is a daily coming to Jesus. This is when we put Jesus on our agenda on a regular basis. So that when people frustrate us, when people aggravate us, when life jumps up and punches us in the stomach and takes our breath away, we look more and more and more like Jesus. We can say, like David created me a clean heart and renewed me a right spirit. This is not a fly-by-night relationship. This is not a Facebook friend we're trying to connect with. This is not a Snapchat buddy. This is not a LinkedIn on our network. This is a long-lasting relationship. This is the kind of coming that Jesus is telling them. Keep on coming when things are good, when things are bad. Keep on coming when life knocks you down to the ground. Keep on coming when things are going well. Think on, keep on coming. When you think you're on top of your game, keep on coming. Just keep on coming to Jesus, spending time with him. This is the ongoing kind of coming that satisfies spiritual hunger. And when we come to Jesus in prayer, and we come to Jesus in fasting, and we come to Jesus through the word of God, and we come to Jesus through praise and worship, and we come to Jesus in fellowshipping with like-minded people, and we come to Jesus in obedience, then we'll never be in need of a real spiritual life or salvation because we'll have it. And we'll know that we have it because Jesus is more than just a bread. Oh, come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus is more than just bread. Yes, he is. But oftentimes what we're dealing with, if I could be honest today, is when we come to Jesus, we bring some things. All right, come on. But other parts of us we leave back. All right. We sing the song, I surrender all. all right. But the reality is if we were to keep it 100, there's often some parts we leave back. Yes, we bring Jesus all our obedient parts, all the parts that look good and can measure up. But the reality is we leave our ugly parts. And we say, stay in the car while I talk to Jesus. We, we lock our ugly parts in the closet because we don't believe that they should be That's right. in the room when we're talking with Jesus. But Jesus is the bread of life. He's the source of life. He wants to change our lives. He wants to enhance our lives. But he said that I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so this kind of intimacy requires all of us. Naked and unashamed so that Jesus can transform us in the midst of the coming. 
All those who come to me shall not hunger. And all those who believe in me will never be thirsty. And this is similar to what was said to the Samaritan woman Jesus shared with her. If you drink the water I give, you'll never thirst again. So this believing again is a daily drinking. There's not a day that goes by that we don't drink something. And so we believe indeed we did. We accepted Jesus Christ. But we need to continue to grow in our belief. We need to continue to grow in our faith. Yes, there are some areas we've been running with Jesus for a long time. And we're real strong in our faith in some areas. But the reality, if we were to be honest with ourselves, is there's some areas in which we have doubt. There's some areas that we don't know if God is really going to do it. If God is really going to work this out for us. But when those times come, we need to be like the man in the book of Mark whose son was demon to possess and say, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. For even when it doesn't look like God is going to move, we have to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. We need to believe Jesus in each area of our lives. And not just our lives, but our futures and our families and in our communities. And we need to believe Jesus for our nation and for our world. Yes, yes. And if we believe Jesus like this, right, yes. then we'll never hunger. We'll never thirst. Yes. Our souls won't long to be refreshed, yes. to be comforted, to be supported and strengthened because we would be in constant connection. Yes. Because Jesus is more than just bread. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So indeed, Jesus has declared himself to be the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never be thirsty. But then he says one more thing, and I love this part. He says he won't cast away those who come to him. He won't drive away those who come to him. Jesus is the bread of life. He is more than just bread. He is the one who nourishes and doesn't starve. He's the one who nurtures and doesn't neglect. He's the one who supports and does not throw away. He provides for and does not reject. If you come to him, he will not throw you away. It doesn't matter what has been in your past or in your present. If you come to him, he will not throw you away. It doesn't matter how you view yourself. You might think that you're unworthy. It doesn't matter. If you come to him, yeah. he won't throw you away. You might think that you're useless or unlovable. It doesn't matter. If you come to him, he won't throw you away. If you come to him, indeed, Jesus will keep you. If you believe in him, he won't let you go. He will hold you up when you feel like you can't make it anymore. When you feel like giving up, he will hold you when life beats you up. He'll hold you when life beats you down. He'll hold you when your back is up against a wall. When you really come, when you come to Jesus, when you believe and you really believe that no one is able to snatch you out of Jesus' plan. But the reality is he still has a plan. He still has a purpose, and he still has a destiny for each of us to fulfill. Yes, 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 yes. Tina Campbell says it like this in her song, Destiny. His will is that I prosper. His will is that I win. His will is that I fight on. His will is that I live. All right. He gave me what I needed when he gave me his only son. He gave me hope and a future. He gave me the greatest love. And now that I've got Jesus helping me along the way, he's perfecting everything about this old girl, making me brand new every day. And so I'm singing, hallelujah, I'm not what I used to be. I'm following Jesus every day to reach my destiny. Hallelujah. I am not what I used to be. I am following Jesus to reach my destiny. And so when we come to Jesus and believe in him as the bread of life, we can ask who 
who, who shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ? Some trouble or hardship?